This episode is brought to you by the Arvada Center because they're kicking off their summer concert series in June. Relax under the stars at the Arvada Center's outdoor amphitheater and take in acts like Melissa Etheridge, Big Richard, Tower of Power, Preservation Hall Jazz Band, The Spin Doctors, and so much more. Concerts are scheduled for June through September. You can find a whole schedule of events and get your tickets today at arvadacenter.org. That's arvadacenter.org. Today on CityCast Denver. Stephen King made Estes Park's historic Stanley Hotel famous as a destination for horror lovers. And now rumors are swirling about a possible sale. But the details are murky. So I sat down with reporter Jay Bouchard from 5280 Magazine to talk about these mysterious plans to redevelop the Stanley into something bigger and better than ever. Today is Thursday, May 16th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Jay Bouchard, welcome to CityCast Denver. Yeah, thank you for having me. So last December, it was announced that the historic Stanley Hotel in Estes Park was being sold to a nonprofit in Arizona, but that deal fell through. Can you explain, can you just explain that to begin with? Yeah, so the history of the Stanley Hotel, obviously it's like 115 years old. It's changed hands a few times. The story recently picked up steam, like you said, in December. Um, News broke that Grand Heritage Hotel Group, which is the current operator, was going to sell to an Arizona nonprofit, and ultimately a film center was going to be developed. It raised a ton of questions, as you can imagine. People here in Colorado, you know, essentially asked, why Arizona? Why a nonprofit? Yeah, that was strange. Those two things were very strange to me. Yeah, it was super strange. Uh, The reality was that that deal probably wasn't as close to going through as it had been reported at the time. But if you go back to December and you look at headlines, the the reporting was this is happening or it has sold, um, which was not accurate. I don't know that we would say it fell through. The deal never came to fruition. Um, And in the meantime, other players essentially started looking into it and and seeing how it could be a cultural asset um, for the state, for the community, et cetera. But the nonprofit from Arizona, no longer involved exactly what happened there Kind of hard to say. Really? I mean, you've been looking into this and it was still hard to figure out. It was it was hard to figure out. I mean, the reality is, is that um, an entity from the state, the Colorado Educational um, or Colorado Educational and Cultural Facilities Authority, a um, bit of word soup there, um, SECFA, as, as they're known as a state entity, was ultimately going to um, give bonds to the nonprofit to purchase the hotel, which would be then paid back. Um, SECFA is still involved. So ultimately, the deal in Arizona was a story about, is this the right nonprofit entity um, to essentially issue the bonds to? Uh, Ultimately, the answer to that question now is no. Um, And we're in kind of a limbo situation with SECFA trying to still um, be the, the owner and operator of the hotel through a very complicated process, which I've been trying to report on the last couple of weeks. And and I, I hope I've shed some light on it, but I, I don't know um, that we've been able to reveal kind of everything that's going on because the people involved don't really want to talk about it. Before we move forward, can you explain a little bit more about what the Colorado Educational and Cultural Facilities Authority is and what role it plays in this conversation? Yes. So it is ultimately what we would call a, a bonding authority. They give low interest, we'll call them loans, to charitable organizations, um, museums, schools, often private nonprofits. Um, and those entities will say they maybe they build a new wing of a museum, maybe they expand a school, um, they generate revenue and they pay the bonds back to SECFA. Um, what's different about the Stanley situation is that there is no charitable organization formed right now that could receive the bonds. So SECFA is trying to create its own nonprofit entity, deliver bonds to that entity, which will ultimately be paid back to itself by revenue produced by the hotel. Very complicated. But since 1981, SECFA has been doing this kind of work. Um, And the tricky question here, as I was reporting, a lot of people pushed back on the idea that this is the state of Colorado. Um, that SECFA is the state of Colorado. 
And it's a bit of semantics. So in 1981, SECFA was established by the state legislature. However, they don't receive tax dollars. So all of their funding comes from revenue generated by the projects they're involved in. Um, So in that sense, they say, hey, we operate financially independent from the state. However, they are a public entity. And I would just say it's not an uncommon kind of thing in planning and development. It is not. No. Like I think folks should know there's all kinds of development entities throughout the city and the state yes. that yes. use these sort of mechanisms to create funding to do things like take on a project like the Stanley, which is not your typical hotel property, right? Absolutely. Like maybe let's talk a little bit of that before we get any more into the the situation as it is now. But it, can you explain a little bit about what makes the Stanley special? I mean, obviously, it's a hotel. It's connected to Colorado in these interesting ways. But like, why would an entity like SECFA be interested in it? Yeah, absolutely. So in addition to being historic and being in Estes Park, it's beautiful. The property is massive. Um, but it also kind of lives in Colorado lore. So In the 1970s, Stephen King spent a night at the Stanley Hotel, which inspired his 1977 novel, The Shining, and ultimately the 1980 movie, The Shining. And that really put the Stanley Hotel on the map. Um, And it became a destination for fans of horror films and horror novels. And they ultimately started doing The Shining tour. They leaned into it. They super leaned into it. Um, And over the years, it gained a reputation, at least in the state said, hey, maybe this is a place where we could develop around film. Um, and that started about a decade ago. So there's been interest from the state and from the operators of the hotel to say, hey, could we develop a film center here? Because the Stanley Hotel already has this reputation. Um, people make pilgrimages to the property all the time, including filmmakers will go and spend time there just to soak up and you know, kind of everything involved with The Shining. Um, And that is the process that's underway right now. And the the motivation for all these players to essentially sell and and purchase the hotel and develop a film center really stems back to its reputation in film. And it's such an interesting property in that it's uh, it was an uh, inspiration for Stephen King. But also it the property itself is this like massive grounds. It's like perfect for something beyond a hotel you know, a film center, something that hosts annual film festivals. It already does things like this. It's already known as an event space for like kind of like darker. I don't know. I My husband plays with Devachka and we go for the Halloween event. I mean, like it's it's just like it's yeah. in the bones of the place. So it, it does. It's cool that our state and maybe folks paying attention were like, there's something more to this than it just being a t- tourist destination for this one moment in film history. Yeah, absolutely. And Colorado, I think statewide, really does want to grow in film. You know, we have an incentive program. You know, people want more films to be made here, but it's competitive. You know, yes. states like New Mexico, for instance, are way ahead of us. California, obviously, but even states like Louisiana have these great incentive programs. And Colorado's, you know, sitting here thinking, well, what can we offer? Um, you know, we do have some incentives, but like the Stanley property, to your point, could be a huge draw because it's so beautiful. It's so massive. And if they were to develop a film center there, it might attract, you know, who knows who might be the next big filmmaker, right? Totally. Um, or but, the next big film event or the thing that becomes the, the next pilgrimage for folks to come to Colorado for this reason. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. From your reporting, it sounds like it was kind of hard to get the key players to talk on the record about what was happening. It, it, did things seem a little like hush hush, KG? I don't know. What does that say to you as yeah. a reporter? <laughs> yeah, I mean, things definitely were were hush hush, and um, folks told me more or less on background that a lot of the reporting that had been put out there over the last six months either was inaccurate or incomplete or misleading, and ultimately, I think with the various players involved, a lot of red flags went up and said, okay, we need to maybe get our story straight before we put all stop this information. Stop talking to the press. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that did not stop reporters from calling. Um, in fact, like as you know, Brie, when someone says, hey, we don't want to talk about this, like your instinct is, okay, well, I'm going to call you every really day until you do. You. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. Um, so it became that dynamic. Um, I don't, people were definitely cagey. I don't think there was anything um, necessarily bad yeah. happening. Like I never got the sense that like, oh, there's there's an issue here that people are covering up. I definitely got the sense that 
everyone involved is uncomfortable talking about it. Um, to the extent that like the owner of the Stanley right now, John Cullen, you know, I reached out on a number of occasions. Um, I know those messages were re- reaching him and he just would not talk at all. I mean, he had he had nothing to say. And then Sekfa as well, Mark Heller, the executive director, um, who I exchanged a lot of emails with, they ultimately decided, you know, and, and he told me as much that we're not doing live interviews anymore. Um, we've Maybe made, until we, the ink is dry. Right. Right. On the deal. Yes. And, and part of that is because they are ne- negotiating a real estate transaction. And it makes sense to an extent, right? They don't want to put anything out there that would jeopardize their position. And I understand that. At the same time, it is a state entity, right? So the public has a right to know what's going Absolutely. on. And, and it's not going to be a small deal. You know, the, the total number on what the sale is is forecasted to be up to $475 million in bonds. Wow. Now, that's not taxpayer money. However, it is a state entity, you know, getting close to a massive transaction. And, and pouring into uh, the potential changes in the economy of a, I mean, it, Estes is definitely a tourist draw. Yes. This could change things, I think, exponentially for them in good ways, but also that's just a lot of pressure on a it's it's a, a place. It's a ton of pressure. And I think from the state perspective, they want to make sure they they get it right. And I, I think they don't want to say too much and until, like you said, the ink is dry. However, it's worth noting that for SECFA, this would be by far the biggest project um, that they had taken on. And in some ways, the most complicated because they've never been the owner of a property. They, typically, they give bonds to a charity and that or like ch- you said, a museum, a museum or a cultural, right. I mean, this is a cultural institution, right. but it's different too, because it's yes. a hotel. Yeah. But in this sense, they had to go to the state legislature. Um, That's what I the, wanted to ask you yeah. about. The session just ended. What was going on with the, what's the legislative's, like the role of that in this deal? Yeah. So it happened at, at the last minute. A bill was actually introduced, um, an amendment was introduced back in February um, and it got absolutely no attention. It kind of flew under the radar to say, hey, we need to essentially change the law to allow an entity like SECFA not just to give bonds, but to be the owner and operator of a property like this. And it happened like a lot of things do in the legislative session. It went down to the wire. I think it was May 7th. So the day before the session ended, they ultimately passed um, the amendment to the bill that now lets SECFA, assuming they can get this transaction across the line, they will be the owners of the project and they'll have uh, their own nonprofit which will be the Stanley Partnership for Art, Culture, and Education. Um, so they are, you know, based on what the legislature decided, on track to get this done. This could also just set a new precedent for how funding happens within the state and cultural, the state's role in these cultural things that, you know, ultimately are tourist draws. And yeah. I mean, cultural institutions have things, do things for this the surround. I mean, I'm just thinking about Estes Park in general. Yes. Like, how is this going? How could this affect Estes Park? Well, it's a it's a good question, and I think it's worth noting that you know in 2015 this project, like the Stanley Film Center, has been an idea for a long time, for almost a decade, um, and they received you know a pledge essentially of 46 million dollars in Regional Tourism Act funding to get this done. That essentially means the state knows that at least $46 million in revenue that wouldn't have been in the community will be generated by this project. And therefore, they're going to get a tax break of $46 million to get it done. So exactly what that does to Estes, hard to say, but it probably prompts questions like workforce housing, which is already stretched with the National Park and other amenities there. Um, And it might be worth noting that there is the, the Fall River Village Resort which was just bought by the owners of the Stanley in 2022, is somewhat involved in this deal. As and that's well. another hotel? Yes. Or? It's 89 units. Okay. Um, it's more of a resort than like a traditional hotel. Okay. It was rumored that it was going to be sold along with the Stanley Hotel um, in order to create more rooms for the people coming to see the film center, et yep. cetera. That is now looking like it might not happen. Um, actually, the Colorado Housing and Finance Authority, Chaffa, um, might purchase that. And this, again, totally up in the air. And they would make that work. I was housing. just going to say that's what Chaffa does is this this would be a different thing for the. Uh, for Estes Park, right. but it could provide, like you're saying, maybe some of that workforce housing that's going. Because I will be honest with you, when I was there last fall, it's such a beautiful place. It is like 
they're understaffed. Yeah. It, you feel it when you are there. There's like nobody at the front desk at night and like you can't. And it's I, I understand. I mean, I think it's an issue statewide is there's just not enough staff. And a big part of that is housing. So they could be really making this deal work in a different way where like they create something that serves all of the needs that doesn't leave Estes Park hanging in the housing way. Right. And and that's just, like you said, the tourism economy across the state. Right. It, that, it, that's a huge factor. Um, and I don't know that I would say like Chaffo is doing this because of the film center. Like these might, I think ultimately these will be independent deals. Sure. If and when they both come to fruition. But those 89 units, if those are workforce housing, is going to be huge for the community, for people working in the national park, people working at the hotel. And it's already built. And it's I already mean, built. This is a thing we're struggling with is like, we need workforce housing. We've got some projects in the works, but they're not built yet. Exactly. This could go into effect immediately. It could. So the other thing I was worrying about was like the Brown Palace here in Denver was purchased by a large hotel chain and like we've seen it sort of diminished slowly the the traditions of it you know they i think it was like they let go of all their bell hops or their valley it was just like i think it was their bell hops and it was this big thing and then they closed one of the restaurants and that's not something that could happen at the stanley because this is a totally different kind of like we don't have to worry about a hotel chain swooping in and turning it into a marriott no and, and under the plan that's being proposed right now and being negotiated behind the scenes grand heritage hotel group which is John Cullen's company, will stay on as the operators of the hotel. So in that sense, the same folks will be running the hotel. And if anything, I would expect the hotel to lean a little further into the things that make it what it is, right? Yeah. Unlike the Brown Palace, which, which maybe moved, way, moved away, kind of away from it. I think all of the things related to film and The Shining and just what makes the place quirky um, will probably be on greater display than they are right now. When they've got a little bit more more money to beef yes. it up and and the staff to even I mean, I remember at one point there was a guy wandering around who looked like Jack Nicholson. They had like a Jack Nicholson Incredible. impersonator. And like you do do a double take, you were like, This uh feels like it's not him, but it could be him. And it was such a smart move by them. But I could see where with more funding and uh more interest and in all these things, it could just make it even more of a destination. Yeah, that's that's one takeaway too I had when I was reporting is that like Ultimately, this seems like it would be great for the community and the state, which I was a little bit puzzled why so few people were willing to talk about it, you know, because my instinct wasn't that there was something nefarious going on. It was, hey, this seems like an opportunity. A really cool thing. Can we have a conversation about it? Um, yeah. I was struck that repeatedly the answer was no. <laughs> and I think you, but I think you hit the nail on the head. This is still a real estate deal. It's still a real people estate deal. People are holding their cards close until everything's said and Absolutely. Done. Is there anything you're looking at or looking forward to or anything we should be thinking about as as we try to figure out what's happening with the Stanley? Yeah. And this is purely speculative. Um, but the Sundance in- Directors Institute yes. was just at the Stanley last week. Um, and that brings in over 100 up and coming directors to essentially stay at the hotel, be in the community and you know work together, do the workshops, be inspired. Um, huge get for Estes Park, for the Stanley um, I, it's not a coincidence that we're trying to develop the you know, Stanley Film Center and Sundance's Directors Institute um, comes to town. So the state is really excited about that, um, about what that might mean, because you know the the film commission really does want to bring more films here, for more filmmakers here. Um, and a, this is again totally speculative, but Sundance the festival might move. So they have a contract that expires after the 2026 festival in in, uh, Park City. There's been no reporting to suggest that could come to Estes, but you have to imagine it's a conversation. Yeah, and the cachet of something like Sundance would immediately up the profile of this project immensely. Yes, and developing a film center in Estes Park could be a huge factor. Be So cool. Well, Jay, thank you so much. This was so fun. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed this show, why not take a minute to tell Stephen King about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See ya. This is 
is my these are my existential crises, Olivia. 